What if you lived in a place that was sometimes uninhabitable for years? You'd have to prepare for the lean years. In fact, you'd need a bunker. Such is the way of the tadpole shrimp. They live in fields and meadows, but they are fully aquatic crustaceans. You don't need to be a biologist to see the problem they have. But with these property taxes, the trials and tribulations of finding a place to live seems to be a fact of life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I am Joe. And I'm Carlos. And thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. Why don't you? Why don't you? And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. To check that out, you can visit us at our home on the web at ldtaxonomy.com. And a very special thank you to our patrons. To Jesse Raspolich, Carol Raspolich, and Richard Kaspar, thank you so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on. And today we're talking about a crustacean that's coming for your Rice Krispie treats, but more on that later. Uh, is Anne the uh, the the nickname of the daughter you're going to have when you name her? Uh, oh, no, Stacy. 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 Yes. Because it's not crustacean; it's crustacea. But Crustacean is like that's a that's like a a Lou Ann or something yeah like that Mary Ann. Um, Rodentia is really the hard one. There's no even shortened version that sounds. <laughs> maybe it's a boy's name, Rod Rod for short. Yeah, Rod. Short so for Rodney, no Rodentia. But Rodentia Encha. sounds like a woman's name. Encha. There we go. This is a good one. Yeah. Um. Yeah, there's no way that someone named Crustacea is not going to be called Krusty all through middle school. So that's you just you you just really hate your 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 spawn if you name them that. No one will know it's not just Stacy. That's not true because that all all it takes is one roll call at school, and then life is over. S T A C E A Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Yeah, we are talking about the tadpole shrimp this week, otherwise known as the old college trilobite, roast in the shell, and Kevin Bacon. Good. Which which I'll explain later. I think maybe I don't know. But let's taxonomize this before we get into the, the the meat of the matter. It's in a kingdom you know, love, and are in. That kingdom is Animalia. The phylum is Arthropoda because it's covered in an exoskeleton. It's covered in its skeleton. It wears its bones on the outside. Let's just say. Uh, the subphylum is Crustacea. Uh, the class is Bian, I want to say bean, but it's I th- I'm pretty sure because this is Latin, it's uh it's bian, bian caiopata, bian caiopata. The super order is Calmanostraca, Calmanostraca. The order is Notostraca. The genus is Lepidurus, and the species is Apis, Lepidurus. Apis is your binomial nomenclature for the day. For this evening. For I'll, I'll, I'll be your binomial nomenclature for this <laughs> evening. <laughs> My name is, uh, you could just call me Apis. Um, <laughs> speaking of nomenclature, it's time for, I guess, my second favorite part of the show, nitty gritty nomenclature. Because uh, we've already done shrimp. We did a shrimp like three weeks ago. So, um, so we already know what the term venery is. But what does Lepidurus apis mean? It's part of the show where I ask you, Joe, a question. And that question is, what does the uh, binomial nomenclature mean in English? Does Lepidurus apis mean 
A. Armored split tail. B. Footless scale tail. C. Spotted swarming shell. Or D. Fragile segmented tail. And I've already dropped a slight obtuse, maybe, a little bit obtuse hint so far in the show. I'm going to go with a spotted one. Spotted swarming sh shell? Sure. <clears throat> that is incorrect. The, the, the hint I mentioned was Kevin Bacon because it is a footless scale tail. Ah, there was so much in each one of those. Yeah, yeah. That I, my brain couldn't latch on to any of them. I overwhelmed you with, uh, with info, <laughs> with data, with information. Um, but uh, I just used a bunch of big words to confuse you. It's basically just a college lecture. But the big one is is apis. So the species is apis, which is it, a meaning not n none or no, and then. Pus is Latin for foot. I would think that had to do with bees, like apiary. No, that's yeah. Um, but it's kind of—it's a little weird that it's footless is its species because, uh, as we'll find out, it has a lot of legs. At least I don't. It depends on what you define as a foot. But let's talk about what it looks like. Uh, it does not look like your typical shrimp. If you are envisioning a shrimp, you are mostly wrong. Um, this it actually looks like a l tiny little horseshoe crab. Which horseshoe crabs have been in the news recently about oh. something about uh, siphoning their blood for science things and doing so inhumanely? I don't know. I didn't read the article, <laughs> but um, and as just, is the way. <laughs> this this is the way um just so it it definitely that this is why i called it the uh a trilobite because if you know what a trilobite well at least used to look like we're more in that in that line of uh of appearance so it's got this wide yellow brown shell disc shaped uh and it covers the top two thirds of its abdomen so like a horseshoe crab um, the last third of its abdomen looks like a tail, but it's just its abdomen. Um, but that part does end, and there is an actual tail. It's th and it's two of them actually that split off like antenna at the end. Um, the shell has two uh, compound eyes that operate similar to you know like a fly or or a or a bee. There you go. Uh, we're back to bees. Mm -hmm. And then underneath it has. 80 up to 88 little, little face hugger legs um, that are used for putzing around your local pond, <laughs> I guess. Um, but surprisingly for something that is the species name, no feet uh, or footless, it has 88 legs. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if you're gonna if you wanted to find the last part of those legs as a foot, then it has 88 feet, and so this is pretty ironic. Um, but if you don't, then I guess you'd be a scientist or a taxonomist at least. But yeah, that's if you're picturing a, a little horseshoe crab bug with two antennas sticking off of its uh, the back of its tail, then you have got the picture, my friend. But it is not as big as a horseshoe crab. So how big is it, Joe? Interesting question. It's almost as if we have a segment of the show to talk about that. Welcome to if the only. Blood Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show. The part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show that's introduced by you when you send an audio of yourself saying singing or chittering. The words measure up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. We don't have a new measure up intro, and it's been many years. And by years, <laughs> I mean months. Uh, so I guess we'll have the uh, this measure up segment um, 
introduced by a crustacean. That seems like a good idea. Go all the way with, up to the subphylum. Without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. I got my new shell. It looks just like the shell I threw out yesterday, and I found it in the same dumpster, but this one had a live raccoon inside. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Man, that's pretty good. All right, yeah, Zoidberg, thanks. I think he I think he's a trilobite at some point during his life cycle in the episode where he gets reverted back. They all go like Benjamin Button style. Oh, that's uh, right. So there there is your you you're you were right. We do have a trilobite cartoon character. That seems like something uh they would do well let's talk the length of an adult an adult tadpole shrimp how, how long are they they're two to five centimeters or 0. 0.8 to two inches how many tadpole shrimp go into the length of the arc Not of the covenant. Of, of the not dying of, of flood. Uh, of the animals. <laughs> the Here's Ark of the Animals. In Genesis, the Ark is described... I'm sure we've done the Ark before in Measure Up, but in, the Ark is described as in, in cubits. Cubits are believed to be the length from your elbow to your fingertip, which is generally around 18 inches. Yep. So it was 50 cubits wide, which is around 86 feet. So how long? 50. It was just a big square. <laughs> <laughs> um I'm trying I'm trying to like go over my memory with a find like with a sifter and see if I can scoop up a number off the top just like a, for, like a, a flow of consciousness kind of a thing I want to say 120 that's that's floating up there and I don't have anything better um, all the pictures show it to be a lot longer than it is wide and I imagine that they, since there were such specific dimensions given in the Bible, that they would have taken that into account when they drew the picture of it. Um, you could go and see the actual one. No, I can't. <laughs> according to, <laughs> you'd see fragments of it, uh, according to the medieval Catholic Church, I'm pretty sure. But... Uh, I mean, you could go and see the replica. Um, I'm just going to call it 200 feet long. That's close to 120 cubits. So, although there's no way that there's like a like it was 127 cubits or whatever in the Bible. That's that's too specific. It's got it's it's a like, it's a nice. Uh, Number divisible by five, I'm sure. So we're just, I'm just going to do 120 cubits, which is 180 feet. Because that's the number I'm going with. You said how many inches? 2.4? Two. Two. Just two? Mm hmm. 1,080? 1080. Uh, that seems like it can't be right, but we are going with it anyway. Final answer. Final answer. The correct answer is 3060. Oh. Uh, did you mention that they're also called Notostraca? And that's way cooler of a name. 
and not an egregious misnomer? Um, no, because it's not part. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's in their order. Notostraca. Notostraca. The arc was recorded to be around three hundred cubits, or five hundred and ten feet. Wow. What does Notostraca have to do with that? I wrote down three thousand and sixty Notostraca. Oh, I see. I see. And it's just a cooler name. Why would it be an egregious misnomer? Because they're not tadpoles and they're not shrimp. I guess they're closer to shrimp than other stuff that gets misnamed. It's close to the things they're misnamed too. Oh, I see. Tad the tadpole shrimp is the is the misnomer. I was like, why would Notostraca be a misnomer? <laughs> I don't know the Latin well enough to have that off the top of my head. Um, we just, we're, we're, we're going to get so, so good at, at tax, at the, the Latin and Greek and taxonomy that we're going to be like, oh, they named it Notostraca and we're just going to laugh about it. And, oh man, I <laughs> wish just I laugh retained, at a word. <laughs> I wish I retained them, the, the knowledge that we talk about here. Uh, only bits and pieces stick around. Well, like a- Apus, like when I wrote that, I was like, that seems like, like, like a foot thing. That's the <laughs> sounds oh like podia or lewd. something like that oh lewd, um, <laughs> but uh, and then when looking it up, it was like oh yeah, it is. It means no no foot. For the rest of your days, it um, means <laughs> it means no feet for the rest of your days. Uh, uh let's talk about the length of their first larval instar. And what I mean by that is not the time, but the length they are in their first instar, which is 0.2 inches or 5 millimeters. How many larvae go into the height of half dome? Here's a hint. Half dome is the famous peak (coughs) rising above Yosemite Valley. And a popular hiking destination. Around 500,000 people climb the mountain each year. It's a st- it's steep cable section combined with the high number of people that the park sees per year contributes to Yosemite's 15 or so annual death toll. 60,000. 60,000? 60, yeah. Answer. I'm, I'm assuming that um, Half Dome is 1,000. Thousand feet tall. Okay, the correct From answer is the ground. I don't know about sea level, but it's sea level. We're talking sea level here. Oh well, fine, whatever. I I have no basis for sea level either. It's probably uh, not at sea level, but whatever. So you're sticking. You're sticking yep. with it. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it, like the glue on the binding. The correct answer is five hundred and thirty-eight thousand. 825 Nota Straka. Oh boy. Half Dome is 8,839 feet above sea level. Hmm. That's a little bit more than what I said. It is, yeah. And, I, I, uh, I'm just picturing it like in the pictures and from like the valley floor to the top, it looks like it's about 1,000 feet. Um, which is what I was going by. I wonder. But since I have no idea how high the park is above sea level, that's all I had to go with. It must be pretty high. We went to, we drove up to another like place and the elevation was around 9,000 feet. Um, it's enough to get lightheaded. Four thousand eight hundred feet off the valley floor. All right. Well, I was still extremely wrong. <laughs> Everybody loves when I'm wrong, right? Yeah. Well, they love when you're extremely wrong because then or it's like, exactly whoa, right. it's that high, or 
Extremely yeah. wrong or exactly right. Those are my two options. Yes. So I either need to be darn sure or I just need to just guess into the into the wild blue yonder. Yeah. Now, I don't think, like, if everyone is like, I think it's a problem. Like, if everyone's like, yeah, I think a cloud's like a million pounds. And you're like, it must be like 500 pounds. Then the the whole, like, a cloud's a million pounds? That is not there. Yeah, but that's not something that the average person probably no. knows. So, yeah. Um, I think the in more interesting fact is that, like Yosemite is one of the highest, has one one of the most dangerous national parks, in terms of death rate, but it's deceiving because it's only because so many people go there. So if you if you if you per person per like a hundred five hundred people, it's not it's like mid middle of the pack. Yeah, that's like Chicago is so much more dangerous than Eustis, Florida. <laughs> like, of course, there's like thirty people in Eustis. No one, everyone in U- no one has died in Eustis, Florida, for thirty years. <laughs> Something's happening in Eustis, Florida. Yeah, it's it's the Hawkins, Indiana of Central Florida. <laughs> uh, that's all I got for that. Do you have any fast facts before we get into the major fact? I do. So the tadpole shrimp lives in temporary freshwater ponds around the world. So again, if you're thinking of a shrimp that's swimming around in the ocean, think again. It lives in freshwater ponds and temporary ones at that specifically the ones that were noted uh the countries are new zealand australia iran israel france germany italy denmark and austria just a just an absolute swath (laughs) of the of the world there from new zealand to france that's a that's a quite a quite a journey um It specifically specifically likes seasonal ponds, ones that fill up during the rainy season and then dry out during the, you know, non-rainy season. Um, It likes to eat plant matter, mostly floating detritus, just the most delectable thing a shrimp can eat. Yes. Um, And small aquatic invertebrates, as well as algae, bacteria, fungi, and something I can't pronounce. Oh, no, Mixozoa. There we go. I looked at it for a second. (laughs) Um, They have to keep an eye out for birds that like to gobble them up. Um, And also, there is a pretty common intestinal uh, internal parasite that likes to um, get its spores into its body, uh, which often kill it. And I'm going to leave it at that because the rest of the uh, research I did most likely is the major fact. All you told me was rice lice, so I was like, <laughs> "What am I? What is the major fact?" But now that I'm thinking about it, I am. Th- I think I may have uh, researched all over that. So take it away, Ernie. Well, you have stumbled on the name of this episode: rice lice, um, tadpole shrimp are a rice farmer's bane. In the wild, they eat aquatic plants, small invertebrates, and sediment. But in civilization, they love rice patties. Me too. Me too. Rice cakes. Rice is grown in flooded fields, which protects young seedlings and rice roots from the harsh heat. Seedlings sprout underwater and then grow up into the open air. But it's during this critical period that the tadpole shrimp are most dangerous to a young rouse. (laughs) Rouse? (laughs) I like the idea that a singular singular rice is Is rouse. rouse. Yeah, isn't that funny? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Tadpole shrimp damage rice in three ways. First, they like to chew off the coleoptile, coleoptile, 
which is a sheath that protects grass roots. Then they eat the grass and the roots. So it protects grass shoots, sorry. Second, they dig and bury their eggs in the mud, which uproots rice seedlings. So they eat the protective coating, and then they um, uproot the things by digging. And then the digging makes the water brackish, which blocks out the vital sunlight and stunts plant growth. So these guys are just wreaking havoc in rice paddies. So what is a young rice shoot to do? And the answer is grow. Uh, like reverse sea turtles, they can reach safety as soon as they get out of the water. Uh, when the plant emerges from shallow water, it gets all the sunlight it needs, and uh, the plant is too big to be uprooted by egg-laying activities. So they, they, it just outgrows the tadpole shrimp's ability to affect it. Hmm. Um, farmers need to plant rice quickly after a field is flooded to give plants a chance to grow out of the water before tadpole shrimp colonies gain a foothold. Uh, on the other hand, though, tadpole shrimp are like anime antagonists that turn to allies later in the series. Rice oh, plants, I thought because no matter what, they just can't die. <laughs> Uh, rice plants that grow past their vulnerability to these creeping crusties end up benefiting from their presence. The shrimp turn their culinary attentions to the weeds in a rice field that might steal nutrients from the rice plants. But tadpole shrimp are aquatic creatures, and in the off-season, rice fields are dusty, dry ground. So... Where do tadpole shrimp even come from? Well, here's the answer. Tadpole shrimp lay eggs in the mud and then die after about a month. But the eggs have a tough shell which endures the dry season in the soil and, endure, and in enduring grow stronger. That's the subtlest, that's the deepest cut reference I can make. Is that the, like a is that a next generation reference? No, no, it's uh it's from the C, the computer RPG Planescape Torment. Oh gosh. One of the characters you can get like constantly says whenever he levels up he says endure and enduring grow stronger. <laughs> okay. Uh when um the fields flood the, the eggs hatch, starting the cycle all over. But what if farmers don't irrigate a rice field the next the following year? What if rains don't allow for rice to be planted in that field? No problem. Eggs without the right moisture or temperature enter a state of diapause, which is halted growth that doesn't lead to egg hatching. The eggs can survive being completely dehydrated for years. They lie in the earth waiting for the wet activation of a spring rain like the winter freaking soldier. They're like uh, cicadas. Or, or yeah, more, more like cicadas. If your rice field has a significant tadpole shrimp problem, the typical response is to use pyrethroid insecticides, which I assume work on crustaceans, which are not insects. However, the, an alternate, alternate shrimp tadpole management practice involves using mosquito fish, which have a taste for the tiny crustaceans. This is the first time hearing of anything called a mosquito fish. Mosquito fish. It's probably just a regular looking fish that likes to eat mosquitoes. It probably eats mosquito larva. A-OK -okay in, in my book. Best fish. That yeah, a, it's... That, that wins the award for best fish. It looks like a little guppy. It looks like a little bait fish. Yeah, Minnow. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna like string several of them around my neck and see what happens. I'm sure they will die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you will have a stinky neck. Oh, yeah, and and lots of mosquito bites. <laughs> uh, but that's all I got for that. 
I started, I looked at, I, I first heard about this as like, oh, there's tiny little crustaceans that plague rice fields. Isn't that interesting? And I'm like, yeah. And then I started looking into it. I'm like, oh, they're the winter soldier. They, they can lay eggs in the dirt that hatch years later when it rains. Decades, I was reading. Yeah, crazy. Up to 28 years. They're preppers. They're like, it's like ha- hatching a tardigrade. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we very recently did an animal that um, lives in a pineapple. Oh. In, yeah, in a pineapple under the sea. No, in, in temporary. Uh, I think it was a frog. Halfway the, the, housing. <laughs> it was whatever frog. I, oh, it's the. I think it's the common rain frog that um, lays oh, its eggs yeah. over temporary ponds so that it can it can drop directly into the water. And I think they skip the tadpole pa- phase. So it's relevant because we're talking about the tadpole shrimp, but. Yeah, crustace- crustaceans are in places you would not expect, like yeah, wood lice and and all in the rice fields. So, would it, when the rains come, do you also have to read from the red book of Russian random word code words to 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 get the tadpoles to the, the shrimp to, to activate and kill again yes to kill rice again yeah yeah <laughs> so all you have to do is just not say those words you should be good to go or get mosquito fish yeah all right that was the tadpole shrimp for you out there in podcastia pick a pond any pond sow your wild cysts and wait until your ditch fills with water to awaken like the winter soldier I guess like the tadpoles from here in life death and taxonomy Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. podcast <laughs> mosquito fish are nature's captain america the patriotic cure to communism <laughs>